Hi everyone, it's Dawn and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Well, we have Carnival Cruise Line saying they're shutting down one of their brands, one of their nine brands, at least in Australia. We also have a big celebration happening in Liverpool as Cunard has had its official naming ceremony of its new ship. I think we know which cruise ship in Alaska was the cause of that United plane that had all the CDC up in arms when they had to quarantine the ship because passengers became ill on board. I think we know which one had the norovirus outbreak now. And another warning of why not to book your flights too early because a cruise ship got stranded right there at the port in Seattle and ended up being over seven hours late. So that's right, uh, p Cruise Lines in Australia, one of the more historic and well-known cruise lines sailing in Australia, has a big history sailing there. Carnival Corporation says at the end of 2025 season, which in Australia is in March, they are going to be shutting down the brand in Australia and merging it with Carnival Cruise Line themselves, not Carnival Corp, Carnival Cruise Line, where they will transfer two of the ships currently there into the Carnival fleet, as well as then getting rid of one of the other ships, probably one of the older ships in the fleet as they, they sell off. This will of course increase Carnival Cruise Line ships by two, which keeps it as being one of the largest cruise lines in the world. It also, uh, will make a lot of people in Australia a little bit sad as a lot of people like to sail the traditional British cruising in Australia and they've been around for so so long and now it seems they're going to be rebranded into the Carnival Corp. Not sure if they're going to do like they've done with Costa and Carnival kind of a, made it an Italian theme. I wonder if they're going to do that with the British ships and keep it kind of a British theme on those ships, like the Carnival Luminosa is Italian kind of thing, right? We will have to see. It all depends on what Carnival decides to do. But yeah, as of March 2025, no more P&O in Australia. Yesterday was a day to celebrate if you're a fan of Cunard and the brand new ship, the Queen Anne. They had their naming ceremony in Liverpool among such celebrities as uh, Spice Girl <laughs> was there. Uh, they had Katerina Johnson Thompson was there, an Olympic medalist. Um, Melanie Chisholm is the uh, Spice Girl that was there. Uh, not to mention, the closing ceremony was... Um, sung by Italian tenor Andre Botticelli. He, uh, he closed it out with the Royal Liverpool Philharmonic Orchestra. So that was a, a pretty big ceremony out there. They had a good time. Thousands of people lined up the docks that were allowed to get there. And yeah, I would have loved to have been there, but I wasn't invited, I guess. <laughs> it's a long way to travel um, for a single day ceremony. But yeah, Queen Anne, congratulations. Naming ceremony, the newest ship in the Carnival fleet. The other day I mentioned that there was a United flight that when it was flying from Vancouver, Canada, after an Alaska cruise to Houston, they had 75 passengers on board who seemed to be from the exact same ship and they came down with a gastronomical outbreak seems on the ship. The crew started noticing passengers having upset stomachs, etc. And when they landed, they were met with the CDC who had to escort them over to the side. They checked them out. Three people were escorted off and tested and the flight was all delayed. It was kind of a big deal and the, the plane itself was actually pulled aside and had to undergo deep cleaning afterwards and pulled out of service which disrupted a lot of flights for United going forward that that plane was scheduled to do and they had to bring in other planes, other pilots, other crew, etc. Not to mention the delay of those folks getting home, etc. Well, it seems that the cruise ship was most likely the Celebrity Summit as it had arrived on May 31st, last Friday, and that's the day that the flight 
back to Houston happened, and they are now reporting that they had 63 of their passengers on board reported symptoms of the norovirus, as well as five crew members as well. They said most passengers had no idea this was going on. They implemented their normal procedures for stringent cleaning and everything once they noticed an outbreak was going on. Again, like I said, the vast majority of this is just people having a little bit of an upset stomach and ended up spending a one or two days in their cabin during the cruise not feeling too well. It's not a fun situation, but it's not a life-threatening situation as well. It's just annoying, as again, I'm going to stress that thing, folks. Start washing your hands again, because during the COVID pandemic, boy, we were washing our hands 25,000 times a day. And now the most lonely place in the world on a cruise ship is that hand wash station on the way into the buffet. You're pretty much all by yourself if you're one of the people washing your hands. I've been noticing it on all of my last five and six different cruises across all the different brands. It's kind of a shame, but that's why the norovirus is becoming more prevalent right now. It's because the cruise ships are crowded and nobody seems to be taking those cautions that we did before, as simple as washing our hands. I hate to keep stressing it, but it is a big reason that these outbreaks are happening. Now, I gotta give you this other reason why never to book your flights too early, but before I get there, let me just invite you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. If you wanna keep up to date with everything going on in cruising, from the increase norovirus activity that's going on to cruise lines shutting down their brands, to cruise ships getting stuck in port, to cruise ships coming online, to cruise ships leaving the fleet, etc. Everything you wanna know, little tips and tricks to make your next cruise just a little bit better, a little bit safer, and maybe even a little bit cheaper. We'll hope to entertain you here. It really doesn't cost anything, but boy, when you go, hey YouTube, we like that video, or I'm gonna like that channel and subscribe to it. YouTube goes, oh, people like it. Let's share it to more people and see if they like it. That's really the benefit to hitting the subscribe button from my end and on your end, I hope you're enjoying the content as well. And again, thank you everybody who subscribed, leaving those comments, likes, and even the dislikes if you disagree with what I said. I still really do appreciate it. All right, let's talk to what happened in Seattle as the quantum of the seas pulled in. It was too windy, and they ended up having to anchor out in the port. Well, not only did they have to anchor out there while waiting, they needed to have a couple tugboats. Normally there's two tugboats that will escort a ship of this size into the dock. Uh, this time they needed three, but in order to do so, they also went out and they had to move a couple other ships out of the way just in case something happened when the Quantum was on its way in. They finally got it out there and pulled in with high winds. The high winds was the factor. They didn't want to take a chance that the winds would push the ship too far one way or another and cause a collision, which is the right thing to do. Good decision by the captain. And they were sitting there waiting for the tugboats. Well, it took over seven hours. So they were scheduled to arrive at 5 a.m. And they didn't pull in until noon. Now, if you're one of those folks who scheduled your flights at 11 a.m., like I did on my last cruise out of Seattle just a couple of weeks ago, so this could have happened to me just as easy, well, they all missed their flights. And it's all because of high winds in the cruise port. So again, I, I have to stress over and over again, it wasn't smart of me to do that, but my next flight wasn't till close to midnight. So I either had that flight or midnight, and because of my status with my airline, I know if I miss my flight, they would rebook me at no extra cost. So I have a built-in protection for that, plus the insurance I have for delays. I'm covered, so I was okay with the risk. If you don't have that kind of coverage, then it's a big risk and a big expense if you end up having to repay your you know, airline tickets and get your own flights back home. So again, one o'clock, two o'clock, even three o'clock is a much better time than any time before noon when you're arriving at a cruise port. 
like these people found out the hard way. Well, let me know in a comment down below. What do you think? Do you think Carnival's going to have a British brand kind of thing with their fleet now, like they did with the Italian brand of Costa when they brought those ships into their fleet? Could be interesting. Well, I hope you appreciate this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Want to see more tips, more tricks, more travel vlogs from all around the world? Hit that subscribe button. Until next time, have yourself a safe and a great vacation.